my poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. that's still lodged in our bodies and the injuries that me, my friend Danny, Rayshawn, and Keyshawn have sustained mentally and physically will prevent us from playing the game that we love the most. This case, if you wanted to, if there was a picture in the dictionary about racial profiling, this case would be there. These young men would be there. This is that case. This case has already been the catalyst to bring an end to racial profiling among the New Jersey State Troopers. State, State Troopers. It's forever. The bullets that still lodge in our bodies and the injuries that me, my friend Danny, Rayshawn, and Keyshawn have sustained mentally and physically will prevent us from playing the game that we love the most. This case, if you wanted to, if there was a picture in the dictionary about racial profiling, this case would be there. These young men would be there. This is that case. The case drew national media attention and inspired the documentary Four Chosen. I'm really surprised. Everyone's dunking and, and it's just really cool. <laughs> you got to have your heart in the right place at the end of the day. And the fact that all of these folks are out here to contribute to a good cause just makes it that much more sweeter. The shooting of four un unarmed minority basketball players from New York by a pair of New Jersey State Troopers in April 1998 had an impact that resonated across the nation. Not only did it lead to the firing of the officers involved, but it also moved 20 other states to take measures to combat racial profiling. For the players, their story is being chronicled in an upcoming movie entitled Four Chosen. It tells not only of their hopes and dreams before that fateful day, but how they've struggled to put their lives back together in the aftermath. Take a look at it. My dream was to actually take basketball and make it a career. Not only just wanted to play basketball and park in the leagues, but I wanted to play it in high school and college. So. Growing up here was great for me because it allowed me to play the game that I love. Basketball and, and school definitely kept me occupied. And not really, you know, I really even, I was, you know, I was straight up there, you know, I did what I had to do. You know, I was bringing on Danny, Ray, Sean, Jermaine down, you know, because I already had a rapport with a couple of the coaches down there, not just from my school, but I had a rapport with some other coaches. And I was bringing them down there because I knew they was looking for schools. Um, and, you know, see what you know, what happened. Well, it was a rainy night, and I saw the the troopers and the cop car. They slowed up, they go behind me, and, you know, put the sirens on. That's when all hell broke loose. And so I was looking for my paperwork, uh, left the car in reverse, took my foot off the brake, and it rolled back. They hit in the cruiser. The police officer on the passenger side 
he started screaming through the window. He breaks the window, and all I seen was a gun. Fire, shots, man, glass flying. Keyshawn screaming, Jermaine screaming. We don't find out about what was going on. You know, we woke up in a hell of bullets. I just stuck, not, not even thinking that the car was still in reverse. I thought we was getting caught out. He actually watched Danny surrender his hands to the air with no weapons, no resistance, and pause for a second and open fire. The other officer was about in the rear of us. He was shooting from the back. And that put in my mindset that we was, we was going to die. Yeah, Keyshawn, like, my brother got shot. He's screaming, can you help you? He helped him. He like, no, I'm not helping nobody. Stay right here, y'all in the rest. It's still confusing to me to this day. Like, I still don't know why the situation occurred when it did. The bullets that still lodge in our bodies and the injuries that me, my friend Danny, Ray Sean, and Keyshawn have sustained mentally and physically will prevent us from playing the game that we love the most. If you wanted, to, if there was a picture in the dictionary about racial profiling, this case would be there. These young men would be there. This is that case. These aren't the bad kids. These aren't the drug deals part time. The drinkers part time. These are kids that's real. That's very interested in school and looking to make something of themselves. You have to understand that in the history of this country, no law enforcement agency has ever been found to be guilty of a pattern and practice of racial profiling. I got shot in my all of nerve in my right arm. And the bullet that's here. Everybody think that's a muscle. I remember getting shot in my arm, but I don't remember getting shot in my side at all. You see that one? Oh, wow. That one, I guess I was like an inch away from uh, being paralyzed. That the New Jersey State Police were in fact trained to be racist. Now everything started coming about past things New Jersey was doing, how they were training the cops to racially profile. All these the things were coming to, to the light because of us. There came a point where the kids uh, were asked to come down and talk to the New Jersey authorities about the conduct of the police and then testify before the grand jury, which they did. The grand jury indicted troopers James Kenna and John Hogan, each of attempted murder, one count, and two counts each of aggravated assault. Now I know why um, our past leaders like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King took it so seriously because there is <laughs> there is a situation no matter how we choose to ignore it, you know, it will surface and smack us in the face one day. And 